Hello. Today I want to talk just for a while about back bearings. Now, there are lots of times when you're navigating using a map or a map with a compass which could be described as back bearings. There are lots of ways to do them, um, but the four most common types are calculate, rotate, transit and resection. So that's calculate, transit, rotate and resection. Resection is also called triangulation and I'll go through each one of those four methods. Oh, by the way, back bearings are really simple, so don't let anybody tell you that they're only to be used by experts. What are back bearings used for? Um, I don't know how to put it. I'd say they tend to be used to locate your precise, lo precise position on a linear route, which would be when you're walking along a track or down, the, down a stream or the edge of a forest, anywhere you can walk along if you're hand railing it. They're also sometimes useful for finding yourself when you become <laughs> navigationally challenged. I'm not going to say the word lost. Mind you, I just did. So <laughs> you're not lost. We don't say lost because lost has a sense of um, permanence, a sense of finality. You're not lost. You just don't know your precise location at this time. I think the best thing to do would be to remember a, a saying that was made by Benjamin Franklin. I think he was an American president. If he wasn't Americans, <laughs> please forgive me. Benjamin, sorry, Benjamin Franklin said that an ounce of preparation was worth a pound of cure, which means basically in this case, let's try not to get lost. Let's always know where we are on the map. So what exactly is a back bearing? Technically, it's just the exact opposite of a bearing. So if you take a bearing and you're walking in that direction, then the back bearing would be in that direction. If you take a bearing and you're walking that way, a back bearing would be that way. So firstly, let's talk about calculated back bearings. This just means that you adjust your compass by 180 degrees. So if the bearing is less than 180, you add 180. If the bearing is more than 180, then you subtract 180. So as an example, a bearing of one, two, three degrees, as it's less than 180, would become a back bearing of 303 degrees. <laughs> Somebody will tell me if my maths is wrong. A bearing of three, four, five degrees, as it's more than 180, would become a bearing of 165 degrees. So that's, that's all you really need to know about calculated back bearings. All you do is you adjust your bearing by 180. But, importantly, for the vast majority of the time, you don't need to do any calculations. You don't actually need to adjust your compass. Um, so I'm going to get, so that's the calculated one. So let's talk about rotating your compass. How do you do a rotation back bearing? Rotation back bearings are the simplest method. And they're the only ones that you don't need to worry about magnetic declination. Assuming that you're already walking on an adjusted bearing, you don't need to do anything because you're going from compass to compass. So you're not going from a compass to a map or a map to a compass. So you don't have to worry about adjusting your compass for magnetic declination. Let's say you set off on a bearing of one, two, three degrees, and you just want to confirm that you're heading in the right direction. In this case, if you can still see where you started from, um, all you do is you're walking along, so that way you turn around and you put the white end of the needle directly over the compass arrow. And that should point at your starting point. If you can't see your starting point, you point your compass at the last intermediate um, bearing point. If you don't know what an intermediate bearing point is, watch my video on um, how, to follow, how to follow a compass bearing. I'll put the link in the description box. So let's, I'll give you an example. Let's say I'm going to walk to that fallen tree, the base of the fallen tree behind me. So I turn around, I take a bearing and I see that the bearing is 80. Um, all I do is I walk along towards the tree following my bearing but there's an obstacle in the way. So here we go. So I walk along going past this obstacle. Now I can't now 
continue to follow my 80 bearing, it's a not, it, it won't work. So what, but what I can do is I can turn around and I can simply move across until the white end of the needle is directly over the arrow and then I know that I'm back onto my um, 80 degree bearing line. From here, I can continue my walk. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll put that onto, uh, I'll drop this onto your screen and hopefully it'll become a, bit, a little bit more uh, simple, simple to understand. So here I am, I've set my compass at 80 degrees and I'm following the direction arrow, which is here, and there's the 80 degrees. I'm walking along and at some point along the route, I want to check that I'm going in the right direction. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to completely rotate the compass until the white section of the needle, or if, if you haven't got a white section, depending on the make of your compass the south pointing needle is directly over the arrow and then that should point either at my start start position or the last intermediate bearing location so that's calculated back bearings and rotated back bearings the next we need the next one we need to look at is transits which are short for transit lines these are the most commonly used um, form of back bearings they're used all the time um, so what they what these are useful for is if you're walking along a linear route like me I'm on this track at the moment it doesn't have to be a track it could be any linear route it could be walking along the edge of a forest it could be walking down a stream just you're walking down a line what you need to do is you need to find something that is pointing directly at you and it could be another linear route it could be a track that's pointing at you it could be the edge of a forest or anything that's pointing directly at you and most importantly you need to be able to identify that on the ground and also most importantly on your map don't guess <laughs> otherwise you'll be in uh, find you're in the wrong place so let's have a look around at something i can see <laughs> i should have actually come up here before and found something and it would be a lot more professional anyway <laughs> i'm sure i'll find something let's have a look there you go if you look behind me you can see there's a triangle shaped forest and there's a dry stone wall to the right of it and that dry stone wall is pointing directly at me and I'm still on this track so let's see if I can identify this on the map I'll drop this onto your screen so you can see it okay there's a triangle shaped forest and there is the the wall that's running down the right hand side of it okay what I need to do now is I need to just orientate my map and point the map so that the dry stone wall on my map and the dry stone wall on the ground are aligned okay so it's like this and if i then use a straight edge now if i don't if you've got a i'll, I'll, I'll put this onto your screen so you can see what i'm doing if i have a compass i can use the compass like this and where it crosses the path so it's touching the dry stone wall and where it crosses the path the track that i'm on that is my location now if you don't have the uh, if you don't have a compass any straight edge will do and the normal one is to use the edge of the map i'll show you how that works here we go i'll just drop this onto your screen so i'm going to fold over the edge of my map put it onto the dry stone wall and where the edge of my map crosses the track that is my location okay so, so you can do transit by sight like that you can also do it using a compass now this is very important if you're going to use a compass you have to remember you need to account for magnetic declination if you don't know how to do that then if you just watch my video on magnetic declination it'll explain it but the basics are because you're going from a compass to a map if you're in an area where your declination is west then you're going to subtract the declination if you're in an area where the declination is east you're going to add it okay as I said there's a lot more information on that on the uh, the declination video that I made so let's have a look at how you do a transit using a compass so to use a compass um, what we need to do is we don't need to find something that's pointing at us but we do need to find something that is recognizable on the map and it's also recognizable on the ground and over there I can see a very 
easy to spot reservoir. I'll just put, I'll, I'll drop this onto your screen so you can see which one I'm talking about. Okay, that's the reservoir there where the black arrow is pointing to. And I'm going to take a bearing from the left hand side where the, um, the corner juts out southwards. Okay, so here we go. So I'm going to take a bearing. So here's my take my bearing. And I've got a bearing of 282. So that's my bearing. What I need to do now is I need to just transfer that bearing onto my map. Don't forget, I'm going from a compass to a map. So you need to adjust for magnetic declination. I'll drop this onto your screen so you can see what I'm doing. So here's the edge of the lake that I'm going to take a bearing from. If I get my bearing is set at 28 is set at 282. So all I'm going to do is place my compass on the map so that the edge of it is touching the, uh, the edge of the lake where I took the bearing from. And I'm simply going to rotate it, keeping the edge of the compass on the point I took a bearing from. And I'm going to rotate it until the lines inside the dial are pointing straight up the map. Now, if you happen to have a pencil, you can simply draw a line on your map and where it crosses the track, that is your location. If you don't happen to have a pencil, once again, you can use the edge of your map to, uh, to uh, just use it as a straight, straight, straight line so that it goes across the track. So that is my location. So that's transit lines. Now, the next thing to do is have a think about what happens if you're not on a track or by a stream or something like that. What happens if you're out in the open countryside? And in that case, you're going to need, have to do a resection or sometimes known as triangulation. So let's go up onto the fells and uh, have a look how that works. A resection or triangulation, you can think of as just multiple transit lines with a, comp with a compass. And to, for this to work properly, what you really need is three points that you can identify on the map and you can also identify on the ground. So from here, up in the middle of nowhere, I can see Rivington Pike in the distance over there. I can see Noonhill Slack over there. And in that direction, I can, I can make out a very definite contour feature, which the map tells me is called Will Nar. So I'm going to take a bearing from each of those and transfer it onto my map. Don't forget, transferring it from a compass to a map, you need to adjust for magnetic declination. I'll zoom in so you can actually uh, see what I'm doing. So as I said, you can think about do it, doing a resection or a triangulation as just doing three transits with a, cus with a uh, compass and where they intersect, that will be your uh, position. So the first point we had was Will Nar which is this point here, which is a very recognizable contour feature. So we're gonna set our compass on eight degrees there. And all we're going to do again, same as the transit line, we're going to put the edge of the compass on Wilnar and then simply rotate the compass until the lines in the center of the dial are pointing straight up the map and then draw a line. So that's our first line. The next point we had was Rivington Pike, and that was on a bearing of 198. Let's have a look. So set that to 198. Don't forget, we're taking it to the um, feature, so the direction arrow points at the feature. So there's Rivington Pike. And we rotate the compass, so keep it on Rivington Pike, which is here. Rotate the compass until the lines inside the compass are pointing directly up the map and draw another line. And the last one we had was Noon Hill Slack, which is here, which is a Neolithic burial site. And for Noon Hill Slack, our bearing was 280. So we rotate it to 280. It's there. Put the edge of the compass on Noon Hill Slack and rotate the whole compass until the lines are pointing up the map. So that is our position. Just one last point. Some people use map cases like this and they also use laminated maps and other forms of waterproofing on a map. 
if in that case a pencil won't work so what you need to do is get one of these which is a sharpie I, i'm not sure what they're called in other countries it's a permanent marker and then you can actually draw lines on there um, so you can draw the problem is they're called permanent markers for a reason so what you need to do is as soon as you found out your location get some of this which is uh <laughs> I do get some strange looks when I go into the shop. I, I buy a bottle of this every week when I'm running courses. Um, this is nail polish remover um, that uh, people use. It's virtually the only thing that will remove permanent... Let me put this down in case I spill it. Um, virtually the only thing that will remove permanent marker from laminated mats. So as you can see, um, the line's gone. You need to do that quite quickly because if you leave it on for half an hour or whatever it will stay there and your map case will be ruined so that's it let's just go back over what we've done today the first method we used of the four was a calculated um, back bearing which is where you adjust your bearing by 180 degrees so if it's more than 180 then you would subtract 180 if your bearing is less than 180 then you add 180. The second type of back bearing that we covered was rotated which is simply all you do is rotate your compass and put the south arrow south section of the needle directly over the arrow and that will give you a back bearing. The next one we did was transits or transit lines don't forget you can do those by sight by aligning um, a feature with your map and if it points directly at you where it crosses your track that is where you are the next one we did was transit lines with a compass in this case don't really important you need to adjust for magnetic declination if it's more than two degrees you can draw a line on the map from a feature that you can see the next one we did was resections or triangulations as they're called sometimes I don't know why, I understand why they're called triangulations. I'll go through that in a minute. Um, that is basically three compass transit lines and the intersection of the line is where your position is. Just as a thing, the reason they're called triangulations is because that's what sailors do. If you're in a boat, say you're on a, a rowing boat on a lake, um, you'll take a bearing off three different things. But by the time you've taken all your bearings and you've actually drawn them on a map, your boat will have in inevitably moved slightly. So the, the, the lines won't coincide, they won't join. You'll actually end up with a triangle in the middle and you're somewhere in that triangle. And that's why they're called triangulations. But when we're walking, we don't have that problem, provided, <laughs> providing we stay still while we're doing it. So that's it. That's uh, four methods of doing back bearings. Thanks for watching.